Hello and welcome to episode number 13 of Running Rants. We're keeping with that spooky theme this month. And as you can tell, we are here at Guntown Passive Park and Nature Preserve, which opened wow. in 2011. Now, I have not been here since then and I've never been to this park, but what's really interesting is what's gonna be at the end. I'm gonna show you my favorite cemetery. Come on along, let's go for a run. So here we are. We are in uh, the Guntown Park, which is located in Naugatuck, Connecticut. Now Naugatuck is a little bit bigger than where we were last episode. Naugatuck is about 15 minutes south of Waterbury, Connecticut, and has a population of about 35,000 people. As you can tell, this park is very beautiful. I've not been to this yet, but the cemetery is this way. I could not tell you if this leads there, but we're gonna give it a shot. Now on today's episode, I wanted to go over just broadly, just some of the paranormal stuff that I've encountered and things I've seen while going ghost hunting. So if that's your thing, then stay tuned. Now the reason I brought us here to Naugatuck is because, like I said, it's my favorite cemetery, but it's in the, not middle of nowhere, but it is kind of in the valleys. Uh, you'll be able to tell there's mountains over here and it has this very eerie feel to it. There's lots of wildlife, which when you come here at night kind of gives off this, whoa, what was that? type of feel and I don't know I've just I've been to lots of cemeteries and I've been to abandoned places I've been just about everywhere spooky about around where I live and it's just something that drives me back here ever so often now I haven't been here for probably close to 10 years I'll put in perspective last time I came here we were using the GPS or I think we might have even printed out stuff from MapQuest to get here that's how long ago it was so let's start it off I'll save the stories about Guntown Cemetery itself for when we get there, and I'll give you some of the juicy ones I've had at other places. So if you didn't watch the last video, I went over how me and my friends will go ghost hunting, and we have been invited places, and we've also gone places just for ourselves, typically at night. Stuff we haven't done in a long time, but we took it, you know, a little more serious than a hobby. It was just kind of something we did on the weekends, but when we did it, we really invested ourselves in it. One of the times that someone actually asked us to go over to their place was someone over in New Jersey. Now, Jersey from where I live was probably like a two hour ride and they wanted us to get there pretty late, closer to like one or two. Well, I guess this doesn't lead all the way over there. Find our way back. They wanted us to come all the way over to Jersey. So we made our way over, it was me, Max from episode number nine, and two other people. We brought all of our stuff, we brought cameras, we brought all this detectors of changing of temperature and just everything. So we did that, we brought it there and we sat down. We were pretty much talking to thin air for a while. Hey, is there anybody there? Say X, Y, Z. The person who lived there had very convincing stories. And honestly, it creeps you out. That's kind of the fun thing about ghost hunting is that when you hear these stories and then you're in the place that you heard them, it really, and the people who are telling you them are obviously convinced they want you there. It really gets that heart racing. Yet again, if you believe in it or not, that's one thing, but to have someone who truly does believe in it ask you to come and they're scared, heart was raised. So we, like I said, we go up into the, the attic where this girl lives in the house and the attic, the weirdest thing I've ever seen. We go into their house, we go into this bathroom, small bathroom to begin with. Let's say this was like the radiator. They had a door kind of over here. You had to step on the radiator or something to get into this door to then get into the staircase to bring you up into the attic. So we go up to the attic, we're there for a while and we do a lot of different tests. One of the things was we put a flashlight on the other side of the room. One of the ones that you have to like click like this on the bottom to get the light to turn on. It wasn't a twisty one. You had to physically click it. We put it on the other side of the room, asking questions, whatever, an hour or two goes by. One of us even passes out, I think. We have on video somewhere, I don't know where it is, us asking, hey, if someone is there, could you guys, you know, make yourself known, turn on the light or something. 20 seconds, the light on the other side of the room turns on, it illuminates the entire attic. And that really made my heart drop. You know, I'm excited to see it scared that it happened and that wasn't evidence of anything but i do ask myself how often does a flashlight just turn on who knows was it paranormal was it just no, some electromagnetic field i have no idea but it really had me scared another story that we had 
I forget where we were, it's in Connecticut, and it was a haunted road. Now, what's so haunted about the road is some of like the mafia or the mob or gangs and stuff like that would drop people off into kind of like a river or lake right next to where this road was. And another story was that there's a super sharp turn in that road that we were at. And somebody got into a car accident and died right there. I think as the legend goes, it was a kid. One of the things that they tell you to do, part of the legend, is to go out in the road and on the yellow line, put down a penny or, or a coin or something and say something like, little Jimmy, come out. We did that yet again, you know, if you haven't done something like this and you're even just skeptical, it's a really fun experience at the very least. Heart was racing, nothing happened though. So we go down the road and really the only way to go back home was we had to turn around at the end of this like two mile road, turn back around. And right over where we dropped that coin, laying perfectly parallel across the street was like a stop sign or something down there with the screws or, or like the, the bolts pointing up, which to me just kind of made it seem like if you're gonna come over here, your car's gonna break, your wheels are gonna break and you're gonna be stuck. It's a pretty secluded street. And we went down maybe a two, three mile street and we only saw one or two cars at most. And after that one part where we went by, I don't think we saw any. So when we turned around and we saw that on the road, very creepy. Could have easily been some kids off in the bush to come out, just kind of mess with us. Definitely, that could happen. But when you're out there at midnight, one or two, and you go there and then you come back and you're like, oh shit, on a road that nobody is on, it jerked us. And we were like, we had to get out of the car and move it. The same spot that we were really scared about. Ghosts, who knows, but it was definitely creepy. And here we are at Guntown Cemetery. So a little history of Guntown is some of the people who have buried here are actually before the Revolutionary War, early 1800s. It's one of the oldest ones in the town. And there's not really one special or certain thing that people experience when coming here. Now, as you can tell, the whole cemetery is blocked off by these barricades. So a lot of people will experience heightened sound when they get in there, especially from insects. So when they come in here, they say everything gets louder, but that could easily be from the bouncing of the walls. Makes sense. It's very well kept, just like the other one we went to. Someone here has, has kept it up. There's a house way over on that distance, in the distance over there, that was not here last time I came. So that's also new. Or actually was here the last time I was here. All off in the distance, kind of mountains, back here, woods. It's very, very quiet. You can hear yourself stepping on the leaves while you're in here. As I told you, this is one of my favorite cemeteries. Now the story goes that when we were here, we came usually when it was colder in the fall, late fall and early winter. We've come here maybe three or four times. From where I live, this is about an hour and a half drive. When we first got here, we, re we realized that it's so small. You can see every part of it. But the history that it's held here is just so significant. So when we came here, we try and only have we try and stay together, or if not, we stay to separate sides, so we're not getting the sound of each other. Only one person can talk. If anyone speaks or coughs or makes any noise that could be misconstrued as paranormal, you have to just say out nice and loud, that was me. So when we listen back on everything, you're not really worried about what was that noise. If you say it was you, there's nothing to worry about. So we were here. Some of the things people have said, but doesn't stay consistent, is that they hear noises of kids, uh, kids running around. They also say they see horsemen with uh, candles running off in the back that probably was before any of that stuff was built so we read some of those things about kids and when we got back home and we listened to everything in fact we were listening to it on the way home because it's such a long drive we hear something that sounds awfully a lot like someone asking to play and it's a girl's voice now there's no girls with us that day especially someone that sounded young it was pretty clear enough for our ears to perk up when we heard it. So what was very interesting is that if you come over here, now I haven't been here in a while, so we'll have to see. I don't want to step on any graves. Father, mother, there should be some graves back here that are pretty lost. Let's check on this side. And we got the, the EVP recording while we were over in this section. Let's see if it's over here. As of now, this is very well kept, but when we came here, it was kept, but 
here we go but it wasn't this well kept so we searched everything and if you can see these ones over here these are of kids this one says 1817 I can't make out this one and all the way over here August and Sophie children of Caroline and William get some of this out of the way come on did some research and found out that they were awfully young we found something in the records of online and when we came here there was a lot of toys assumingly left for them for maybe family members so when we got the recording it was over here and it really spooked us but that was very creepy I need to put this off to the side so it doesn't look like I'm doing this so here we go we'll walk around and look at it a little bit at night this place definitely did give me an eerie feeling I don't feel that at every place I go to whether it be the heightened noise inside as well as everything being quiet outside of just the insects it did give me an eerie feeling we came when it was snowing out and I added another layer every step was another crunch on the floor as well as you can tell with the leaves September 25th that's three days away over 300 years ago this is still here well it was a short little run wanted to share a little piece of history with you guys hopefully you enjoyed well thanks everybody for joining me here at guntown cemetery in naugatuck connecticut if you like this video and you want to see more like this the last video was like it and check out this video on this side this is october spectacular october there's more to come not all cemeteries definitely some horror movie stuff so stay tuned thanks